Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I designed and developed a site for UI kits. This is not going to be a tutorial. It's going to be more of a case study of my design process, how I designed it, developed it, and then finally launched it. Before we get into the case study, I have two things to say. Firstly, this video is powered by UI8. UI8 is the marketplace for creatives to sell UI kits. So if you're a designer or a developer, you want to kickstart your process, check out some of the design kits. If you use my link in the description, that will be supporting the channel. Secondly, this video is also powered by Webflow. Webflow is what I used to build UISources.com. Now, I'm not a developer, I'm a designer. I don't know how to code, but I can still make functional websites and I can actually launch them. Sites that are not just landing pages, but CMS heavy sites. Uh, if you're a designer and you want to become a developer without actually learning how to code, use Webflow. There's a link in my description. If you use this link, you will be supporting the channel. So let's get started. So if you're not familiar already, uh, UI kits are templates uh, for your design tool, whether Figma, Sketch, XD. So if you're a developer who actually doesn't know how to design, you can use these kits to put together components and create really good UIs. If you're a designer, you can use these kits to explore different creative styles. And you can do this by checking out kits from other designers, sort of getting a look into their design process and trying out styles that you might not have considered before. In fact, back when I started designing, UI kits are what I used to figure out what styles were. So for example, so back then I was using Photoshop. So I downloaded this PSD kit which had buttons and a lot of these elements. And back then iOS was skeuomorphic. So it looked like this, with like real buttons and real shadows and effects, you know? So what I did was I downloaded these kits and I would spend a lot of time looking at each button and being like, how the hell did they do that? This looks like a real button. So there's an inner shadow, there's a drop shadow, there's a gradient on top of this. There's a stroke that, that is applied. The light source comes in from top. And analyzing this and breaking this down would sort of then let me recreate this in my own projects. That's how I got started. And UI kits are also great because you get to see how experienced designers arrange their files. So for example, back when I started, my design files were a mess. I didn't know what the best naming formats were. I didn't know what was the best way to group things. I didn't know how do you manage a design file, which is pretty big. Using one of these kits, you can actually understand a lot about design process from people who've done this a lot more. And this really gives you an idea for how you should approach your own design. So I run uisources.com. uisources.com is a place for design inspiration from the world's best designed mobile apps. And the way I do this is I find the best apps, I record them, and then I sort of categorize them by interaction. So for example, if you're looking for apps that do gamification really well, you can come in here and you can check out flows, like full flows of how apps do gamification. You just hit play and watch, and you can do this for apps, and you can do this for onboarding, and you can do this for a lot more patterns. So this was a site that I run. I built this with Webflow, and uh, I wanted to experiment with monetization. So uisources.com currently costs me about 50 or $60 a month to run. So it does cost time and effort for me to maintain as well as curate content for this. So I wanted to do one experiment in monetization to figure out if I can start making some money from this. The first idea that I had, this is the one that I'm trying out, is page dedicated to UI kits, uh, where you can come and you can say, I want to see all UI kits uh, related to cryptocurrency or all UI kits related to food apps. And you can see this and you can download. So one thing about building products that I've understood so far is you need to launch MVPs. So for me to actually make UI kits for Sketch, XD, Figma, do multiples of these such that it's useful to people, it would take me a few weeks, if not a few months. And at this point, I don't even know if people on my side are looking for UI kits or whether this is the best way for me to monetize. So my MVP for this was, I reached out to UI8.net. UI8 is one of the most popular sites for finding premium design resources, UI kits, as well as other things. And I signed up there as an affiliate. So what that means is I can list their products on my website. I can send them traffic and I get paid a small amount if somebody ends up buying through my site. So that's what I did just so I can create the first version without putting in a heavy investment of actually creating these kits. So that was step one. 
Step two was design. So I had to design a page that fit the style that I already had going for UI sources and made it easy for you to browse kits by category. You can browse by a tool. You can say, I want to see all XT kits or Figma kits or Sketch kits. But what I actually want to do is filter these by type. So I want to see all food related or all booking related or social or cryptocurrency or finance dashboards, things like that. Because the thing with formats is that most kits are in Sketch and if you have a sketch file, you can open it in Figma as well as XT. So personally, I didn't see filtering by type as a very important thing. I thought it would be more useful if I could filter by category. And this is something UI 8 doesn't do either. So this was the design that I came up with. Uh, this is very similar to my interactions page um, where you can browse by interaction. So I put this together in Figma. Um, I kept the top very similar to all the other pages. I put a link direct to UI8 so people know I'm not just stealing their things, but it's actually powered by UI8. And I put these here, um, thumbnail, um, thumbnail, name of kit, category, and price. Now that I had the design, it was time for Webflow. Now, of course, this is not gonna be a tutorial on how to do this because I already had uisources.com. That was completely built in Webflow. It took me about three or four weeks to build it. But I'll show you how some part of Webflow works at least. So Webflow is a tool for developing websites, but instead of writing code and seeing this on your screen and then tweaking code and then seeing the thing, you don't have to write any code at all. You can make these websites by visually manipulating them. It's basically a design tool, but it spits out real websites. Now, one of the questions I had was, why wouldn't I directly design in Webflow? Why are you first doing it in Figma or Sketch? then doing it in Webflow. That's a valid point. Why do people do design when they can directly develop? Or why should I create the designs and then recreate all of this in my app or in my website? Or why should I do first do interactions, make the interactions and then make them again in code? Why shouldn't I directly go to code? And the thing is only beginners and developers have this question. The reason for this is when it's faster to experiment with things, you're going to experiment more. When it's slower to experiment with things, you're going to experiment less. So for you to try out 10 variations in a design tool like Figma, Sketch or XD is really fast. You can quickly go through it. But for you to do the same in development takes a lot more time. And now I know developers out there will be saying this like, Oh bro, I'm actually really fast in CSS, I'll do it. Like sure, if you think that's best for you, go ahead. But that is not what I would suggest. I would say use the design tool to explore your ideas. Go through the full steps of a design process. Start with research, wireframing, information architecture, and then get into visual design. I'm not showing this in this video because honestly, I didn't do that. I already had the idea in my mind and I directly went ahead and did it. I think I'm gonna fake the steps of the design process just because that's the right way to do it. So there were a couple of things I needed to do in the beginning. First was to create models in Webflow. So this was using Webflow CMS. And what I had to do was create a type UI kit, which has name, photo, price, author, and a few other things. Um, so I did this, I created the categories as well. Now I had to collect all this information and add it to Webflow. The way I did this was I used a couple of Chrome extensions, two of them, um, to download all the images and to scrape the site into an Excel. And then I had to do a lot of formatting and editing to this Excel to make it correct. And then I imported this into my Webflow as a CSV. One thing that I did have to do to bring in the data was this Excel's CSV had all of these fields, but it was missing images and the category. And this is unfortunately something that I couldn't import into Webflow. I could have, but it would have been a roundabout process. I've tried this before, but the only solution I had was to manually do this. So I spent about an hour and, you know, going into each of these, going back to my folder, matching this, adding it here, selecting what category it is, and doing this for about 100 items. So now that my data was in, um, I had to start making the front end. For this, I looked at my design and I intentionally was reusing a lot of my components. So the first thing I did was bring in the existing components. I can do this through Webflow like this or just copy pasting from any other page. If you actually want to learn Webflow, there's a link in my description to Webflow University. Within one or two hours, you can understand the basics of Webflow and start developing your first site. Check that out, it's in the description. So the way I did this was a collection item, then there was a link block for this whole thing as a link, uh, image, there was a div. This div was gray, 
it contained another div which had two of two lines of text i had to bind these lines of text to the field from my cms that i wanted it to wanted it to connect to so i had price this was a yellow tag with rounded edges dollar and the price uh, then i checked this out in mobile i checked this out on tablet to make sure it worked fine the next thing i had to do was create collection pages for each of these filter types so i did that by going into the category template and uh, that was it i did this and this is what the page looks like now uh, if you want to go check it out go do that if you click one of these links and end up buying anything on their site uh, this helps support the channel so please do that if you're interested in picking up development as a skill and you want to make websites without learning how to code i would say pick webflow i know i'm going to get a lot of questions in the comments saying hey bro how is php compared to webflow how is wordpress compared to webflow honestly guys you can do your research it's not meant to be a full webflow overview video webflow is what i use in the past 6 to 7 years where i've been building products i have tried everything i've tried hand coding i've made a lot of websites with bootstrap i have used squarespace i've used wordpress for a lot of sites and i've built three to four sites in each of these tools uh, but webflow is the tool that i've been using for the past one or two years for everything to give you an idea ui sources uh, it has about 500 plus interactions from about 30 or 40 plus apps i have a section on chinese apps as well Uh, I'd launched this on product hunt got about 100,000 page views through that every single month thousands of designers use ui sources for research for finding out what other apps are doing and for reference and inspiration to find out how they should implement certain patterns in their own design if i had to do this without webflow i would have to find a developer pay them money or you know partner with them somehow communicate back and forth but What I love about Webflow is enabled me as a designer to develop sites by myself. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, check out the links, UI8 as well as Webflow and let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any questions, you can leave them here in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. This was meant to be a case study, a little peek behind the scenes to show you how I developed this site. Um if you're interested, if you'd like to see a full tutorial on making a website with webflow from scratch maybe it's your portfolio website maybe it's a client website let me know below so i can gauge the interest on that and i'll definitely go ahead and make one in the future thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye